Hey everybody and welcome back to another fun and exciting intermediate math class. Today we'll be in lesson 9.4 in your book and that's going to be on page 372. Page 372 is where we will find linear equations. What is a linear equation? Well I'm glad you asked because you came to the right place. A linear equation is a mathematical sentence that states two quantities are equal. Okay, and this type linear equations, um, when you graph them, when you put them onto the Cartesian plane, right here it says equ equations can be graphed by putting their data onto the Cartesian plane. When you do that with a linear equation, it forms a line. In the last few lessons, we've been talking about the lines on the Cartesian plane their slope and different things like that so now what we're going to do is we're going to take an equation where you have something equals something else x equals 5 for example and we can put that information onto a cartesian plane in other words we're going to get the equation to give us a line okay and that might sound somewhat complicated but it's really not too bad there's two methods that we'll talk about in this lesson for doing this. It's called the table method and the y-intercept method. My personal preference is the y-intercept method, but I've been graphing for a long time. In the beginning, I really liked the table method better because it was easier for me. So I want you to kind of look at both of these different methods and choose which one you like better. Now you do need to learn both of the methods, but you can use one method more than the other method. Uh, but maybe on a quiz or a test, you may have to demonstrate that you know how to do both. But in the long run, you will kind of default to one or the other. Most students um, do that. Most students don't kind of go back and forth between the two methods. They just figure out one that they like and then they go with that one let's do just a little bit of vocabulary before we get into these two methods the input and the output the input variable is the variable that are not dependent on the process of the equation sometimes they're called the independent variable so these variables are the ones that you're inputting into the equation so if you have um, I'm going to use the area formula. If you have area equals length times width, then these two variables over here are what's called the input. Okay, I'll use the, the purple color. Actually, I'll draw it all the way down there. Those are the input variables. Okay, now what that means is, for example, if you're finding the area of this shape, so this is a rectangle. And we want to find the area of the rectangle. Now, here's, here's the length and the width, right? The length is here and the width is here. Now, those two variables, okay, what's the definition? They're not dependent on the process of the equation. In other words, it doesn't matter what the equation is. The length is the length and the width is the width. They don't change based on the equation. The length equals, you know, whatever we make the length, the length equals 8. And the width equals 5. I'm just throwing down numbers. Well, it doesn't, no matter what happens in this equation over here, those two values are going to stay the same. These are what's called input, because we're going to input these. So the 8 goes here, right? And the 5 goes here. These are input variables. Okay, now, you might be looking at this guy over here and saying, well, what is he? He's an output variable. Output variables are variables that depend on the process of the equation, sometimes called the dependent variable because they depend on what happens. In other words, the A always depends on what is the length and the width. What, what are we multiplying together? So that's the output variable. Okay, my answer is the output. So output variable is the answer. The input variable is what I put into the equation to get the answer. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. It's not super, super important that you know that at this moment in time, 
but this will get more and more important as you get closer and closer to algebra class. All right, let's go down here. I told you I was going to teach you two different ways to graph. The first way to graph is by a table. So in other words, when you get this equation right here, well, let's look at it. Let's first of all identify the input variable and the output variable. So in this equation right here, the y out here, that's the answer. So this is the output, okay? And then this one over here, the x is kind of, um, it's just part of the process. Like you need it to do the process. So this is the input variable. So I just wrote in and out to save me just a little bit of time. So again, a, a concept that you need to know. Um, but, and so I'll just kind of talk about it every once in a while as we're going through this pre-algebra stuff here in intermediate math. But as you go through pre-algebra and you go through algebra, you're going to hear a lot about the input variable and the output variable. So hopefully it starts making sense to you. All right. So what we're going to want to do with this is we're going to want to make a table. Now I'm not talking like a table that you eat dinner on. I'm talking about a table, like a chart. So what we do is we make an X and a Y table. So this will be our X and this will be our Y. And really you can put them on either side. It doesn't matter. But uh, I just put X on the left and Y on the right. It's kind of the way that I do it. Um, and so now what we want to do is we want to choose any random number to go in for X. Now we're going to be graphing this. So if we choose a number like 1000, we're going to have to count 1,000 spots on our graph in order to graph that. So big numbers don't make a lot of sense. Let me kind of write down some numbers that make a lot of sense for us. Numbers like 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. Those numbers are going to make a lot of sense for us to pick for our independent variable. We're going to put those in. So this is the independent variable, right? We're going to put those into the equation. And again, you don't want to put big numbers because the bigger the number, the harder the equation is to solve and the harder the equation is to graph. So let's kind of put some of these random numbers in there and see what we get for our output. So if we put in zero, I love zero, zero is a great number. Um, we're going to plug that in for the X. So we get Y equals two times zero minus five. Well, 2 times 0 just cancels. 2 times 0 is 0. So then we get y equals negative 5. And that's our solution because we have our y equals. We have our numbers on one side and our letters on the other side. y equals negative 5. So we'll put negative 5 right here. Okay. And then we're going to do it again. We're going to pick another one of these numbers. And then we're going to keep going through this. We're going to go through this three times. Now technically you can get a line with two points, but we like to do the third point just to check our math, just to make sure we didn't mess anything up. So let's try the number one, and now it looks like y equals two times one minus five, and y equals two times one is two minus five, and then y equals two minus five is negative three. You got to remember sometimes how to do your negative numbers there. Um, subtracting a bigger number, you're going to get a negative number. So y is going to equal negative 3 on that one. Okay. So now we want to go back and we want to go through the process one more time. I'll just kind of leave that. And then this time, you know, we can choose whatever we want here. Let's try negative 1. Um, some of you are afraid to use a negative number, but it's not that big of a deal. Okay. So negative 1. All right. So here we go. Negative 1 times 2 is going to be negative 2 minus 5. If you remember how to do this, right, we're going to change the sign of the second and add. So negative 2 plus negative 5. And when you're adding two that are the same, we're going to get a negative 7 on that one. So negative 1 gives us negative 7. Okay. All right. So there's our three points. And now we're ready to graph this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come down here. We're actually going to put this on a graph. All right, so here's our Cartesian plane, and we're going to graph this chart that we just made. Here's our X and Y chart. So we're going to graph it by 0, 5. Now notice we have an X and a Y. 
So on our line over here, we have an X axis and a Y axis. So here's our X and here's our Y, right? So let's come down here and let's start graphing these points. Zero, negative five. So if we're going zero on the X, we're going negative five on the Y. So if we're not moving, we're not moving right or left, we're just going to go negative five, one, two, three, four, five down. Our point's going to be right there. Now let's put our second point, 1, negative 3. So now we're going 1 over on the X and 1, 2, 3 down on the Y. And then our next one is negative 1, negative 7. Negative 1, so 1 to the left, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. And our point's going to be right here. If you'll notice, we have a line forming here, right? So you'll see these three points, and so that's going to be our line. So I'll go ahead and draw a line through these points. It's not maybe perfect, perfect, but that's pretty close. And there we go. So we have our three points, and then that forms our line. So working through um, graphing by a table, let's just review it real quick. We're going to just put a table down of X and Y. We're going to start putting in random numbers. The easiest numbers to use are these little numbers over here. And then that's going to give us, when we put our input variable, it's going to give us an output variable. Then we take those numbers and then we just put them on the graph. All right, next and the last thing for this lesson is graphing by y-intercept. For me, this is uh, my favorite way to do it. It's just a little bit easier in my opinion. But again, you make your own decision. So we have, um, first of all, we need to know what is y-intercept form. And y-intercept form is defined by y equals mx plus b. Now, there's some really cool things about this formula. Some things that maybe you've never seen before. What is m? What is b? Well, you should remember what m is, right? Because we've talked about that. m equals the slope. Okay? So that was the previous lessons that we've done. Now, what is this b letter over here? B is equal to the y-intercept, okay? What is the y-intercept? We've talked about that. It's where it crosses the y-line. So if you go back up here to this one that I did, I did a y-intercept right here. How did I do a y-intercept right there? Because I put 0 in for x. When you put 0 in for x, look, this is where it crosses the y-line. It crosses the Y line at 0, negative 5. That is an intercept of the Y axis. So what we're going to do here is this is going to give us a point. And here's what the point's going to look like. It's going to look like 0, comma, and then it's going to be B, which is our Y intercept. So that's going to give us a coordinate point that we're able to graph. Okay. So if you look here, this thing is already in y-intercept form. Take a look. Our m is in front of our x, so our m is 2. And then our plus 5 is already out there, which is our plus b. So let's go ahead and write this down. In this case, our slope and our y-intercept are already given to us. So our slope is 2 or 2 over 1. Remember, slope is always in fractional form. And our b is going to be 5. Or you could write it 0, 5. Okay, that's the point that we're going to be using because our intercept, our y-intercept is at 5. This is where it crosses the line because it has a 0 for the x. That means you don't move left and right. You're just on the y-axis. All right, so believe it or not, we are ready to graph this one. All right, so the first thing that I want to do here is I want to graph the point that I know. When you're graphing by y-intercept, you graph this point because I know that my line intersects the y-axis at 0, 5. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to be on the x. I'm going to be on the origin, the 0, 0. So the x is 0. The y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. So I'm going to have a point right here. So kind of the same as we did up here in this one, we got the same point. We're going to get the same line because we're graphing the same equation. 
and we're going to get the same y-intercept because it's negative 5. I had a positive 5 there, but I noticed I messed it up because this equation was negative 5. It's the same equation that we're graphing, so this y-intercept is negative 5. So I need to come back over here and put a negative sign in front of my 5. Okay, so that was my mistake when I wrote the equation on there. So it's negative 5, not 5. That's why I went down 5. You're like, what is he doing? Okay, I messed it up. So this would also be negative 5 here on the 0, negative 5. Sorry about that. Hopefully that didn't mess you up too bad. All right, so I have negative 5 on my intercept, okay, just like I had in this one up here because we're doing the same equation, 2x minus 5. Now, here's the question. From this, how do I keep graphing this? I've only got one point. What else do I have? I have the slope. Look at right there. I have the slope, 2 over 1. So watch what I can do. I can use my slope, 2 so I can go 2 up, 1, 2, and then I can go 1 over, and then I have my next point. And I can do it again. 2 up, 1, 2, 1 over. There's my next point. I can keep going. 1, 2, 1 over, and I get my next point. I can even go this way. Because slope is, remember, if I have negative, negative, and then it's the same as a positive. I could go down to 1, 2, and then 1 over to the left, so negative 2, negative 1, and now that point is on my line as well. So now I'm ready to go ahead and draw my line in there, and we'll go with that. We'll call that good. It's close, um, and so if you notice, all of those points, that this, it, when, when I use the slope, they all fall onto the line. If you didn't follow that slope intercept form as well as you did the table, that's kind of to be expected at the beginning of you when you're starting to graph things. So use the table if that's more comfortable for you. If you understood the slope intercept, then you can go ahead and use that. But I just wanted to show you that method. That way, as you continue to learn more about this, maybe that way will become a little easier for you like it has become easier for me. That's all I've got for you in this lesson. Hopefully you learned something there. If you missed anything, slide it back, watch it again. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.